Hello everyone, William here from 222 Productions, now in a different section of the XL Center basement, uh, home of the National Ninja League Season 4 World Championship. And this time I am joined by a multiple time Vegas finalist, a former uh, captain of Ninja vs. Ninja, and the man who was dubbed the Genie Ninja, uh, Thomas Stillings. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Doing, doing alright so far. It's alright so far. I'm talking to you. That's always positive. Yes. So, um, you shared an interesting story of t to me the other day about the, the nickname, the Genie Ninja. How did that come about? Yeah, so um, most people don't realize I was actually a Stage 2 national finalist in Season 7 of American Ninja Warrior. But I didn't really have a presence or a name. So going into Season 8, we were always told, don't wear logos. So I grabbed a pair of pants that my wife bought me um, that had no logos. I could have full range of motion and flexibility and they happened to be the ever so famous genie pants. Um, and I wore those every single run I had that season. And apparently the entire time I was doing that, Matt Eisman and the crew and the per, uh, producers were all calling me the genie ninja. I had no idea that this was happening this whole time. And then I got invited for skills, and I was super excited for that because I was known as being like the really fast guy. So I got invited for striding steps, which is all speed and agility. I'm a parkour guy, it's like this is my specialty, I'm stoked for it. Um, and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna wear shorts. I wanna go fast, as light as possible, I'm gonna wear shorts. And um, the shorts I actually wore had a big logo on them, so I couldn't wear them. So I went up to my friend Karsten Williams, who just won the Super Salmon Ladder, and I said, hey Karsten, I need your shorts. He just kind of looked at me for a minute. We traded shorts, I wore them, we go to set, they're introducing us to the crowd, and then Matt Eisman is like, eh, we have christened him, the Genie Ninja, we have Thomas Dillings! And I'm like, hi there, and I'm just standing there in front of a whole crowd of people in just red shorts, and I'm just like, hey, they're, in the, they're at the hotel, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Easily one of the most embarrassing moments I've ever had on set. That's, that's pretty amazing. And the fact that you and Karsten both won your events in the same pair of pants is quite a, an interesting story also. Yeah, that was a, uh, it was a whole thing, a little joke we had going on, is they were the magic shorts. Um, they, they ha I, I, something about those shorts was going on, because we both wore them and we both won. Right. So maybe if I should have wor worn them the last time I did Strike Steps, I would have won. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Strike Steps, since, since you were the winner, uh, why, why do you think you, you won? Uh, with just such uh, the speed and the balance required to do that particular event. Well, the thing about the striding steps is uh, they vary in size and they kind of wobble a little bit. And then when you go on the rope, you got to come back. It's just commitment. Um, it's just accepting the fact these are going to wobble. These are different sizes. I just got to aim for the center and trust my feet are going to go where I want them to. Um, and a lot of people, when they would do them and they would test them, they'd fall a couple steps in because they would see them wobbling and their whole eyes and their depth perception would just kind of go into a freak out mode. Mm -hmm. So um, it just comes down to confidence, you know, just confidence in your abilities and confidence that you're doing something that you enjoy and that you love and you're going to have fun doing. So what's to be, what's to be scared about? That's that's a very good answer. Um, so so one of the storylines that that A and W had presented in regards to you uh, in the past was you and Daniel Gill having sort of like a, a friendly rivalry, seeing who could one up the other person. Where in regards to you and Daniel, where did that relationship start, and 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 how how has it been lately? Yeah, so that rivalry kind of just appeared out of nowhere um, because in in season seven we were both rookies um, and we both posted very fast times in qualifying. Um, I remember after I hit my qualifying buzzer for the first time in season seven, I was ecstatic, I was so stoked, and everyone's like, that is the fastest time of the night. And then literally right after me was Daniel Gill. And they were like, nope, sorry, check that, that was the fastest time of the night. Um, and then we just kind of got called in the next day for interviews. So like, people don't know this, don't know this but um, ninjas get called to set a day early for interviews, B-rolls, and, and, and stuff like that. Um, I didn't on my first year. I didn't. Daniel didn't. Um, we were both rookies. No one knew who we were. And then after we both hit qualifying buzzers our first years and it was a big deal, they were like, hey, right, we need you guys here tomorrow morning. And we're like, but it's like 3 a.m. No, we need you here tomorrow morning. Uh, okay. And we just kind of sit in there. Hi, I'm Thomas. Hi, I'm Daniel. That's kind of how we met. And then every year after that, we just kind of kept going and going, and we just kept seeing each other more often. And they were just like, what's up, Daniel? What's up, Thomas? How you doing? Doing good, man. How about you? All right, cool. This obstacle right here, I'm going to beat you. I don't think about that. 
and we just kind of it was it was like it was like our young our our, our like us being young and just wanting to push ourselves the best way we knew how. And we both started in the same region, the same year, so it was pretty easy. Um, and then like now, we still do that, but it's more of, um, it, it, we we're more grown up, we're more adults, we're more veterans. I mean, it's not about the speed, it's not about the rivalry, it's about pushing each other to complete and not beat the other person. Right, right. That's... <laughs> Very interesting uh, uh, background. Um, you mentioned you mentioned the whole the whole three a.m. coming back in the morning thing. Uh, one of the things that ninjas, especially on A and W, have to deal with is the fact that it films at night. Um, as someone who just went to the taping last year, I know that like it starts eight ish, nine ish, and then it'll go until six thirty if need be. How do you deal with the sleep patterns and the just everything involved staying up late at night like that? Yeah, so the best thing to do that is actually, t what I like to do is um, as soon as I can, at the earliest possible, um, when I know I'm going to compete, um, especially especially two weeks leading in, I try to change up my sleep schedule as much as possible. And you hear this from so many other veterans, where we like to sleep all day, stay up all night. Sleep all day, stay up all night. And then when we do sleep all day and we stay up all night, we're like, we're getting tired, okay, we're going to take an hour, two hour power nap. Mm -hmm. And then ba wake back up, good to go. Um, that's the key is actually you know being able to stay up late at night but also be able to knock out power naps when you need it uh, otherwise you're gonna be super hyped up and standing all around getting super excited and they be like okay 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 when you actually get on the start platform oh, I'm so tired my back my legs ugh, it over hurts I see it every year from from rookies and it's like bring a sleeping bag bring a hammock everybody brings it find a comfy mat lay your stuff out and just claim that area for you that's like the first thing we veterans do on set. When we find the warm-up area, we're like, all right, guys, see this area? This is my corner. Nobody can take it. Got it? All right, cool. <laughs> wow, I wasn't aware of the, of the, the mats and sleeping bags. It's a, very inter it's a good strategy. It's a good strategy. I like it. I like it. So you've been to Vegas a few times. Uh, unfortunately, like you, like many others, stage two, haven't been able to pass it yet. What do you feel like you need to do to get yourself past that point in the course? So getting past stage two, I've always known what I had to do. It's just the one thing I don't want to do is actually condition, actually work out, um, not just play on obstacles. Um, do obstacles weighted, not very good at that. Doing pull-up exercises, not very good at that. Uh, having a workout and a diet regimen, not very good at that. And that's why I've consistently been able to get to stage two. But in order to get past stage two, there you have to actually. Those are the ninjas. You you see them. They buckle down, and they do what needs to get done. And that's what I'm doing this year. Um, my max pull-ups. People don't realize this, but I was actually. I'm actually not that strong, at all. Um, my max pull-up without coming off the bar. No kidding. A couple months ago was ten. Every ninja I've told that to has just been like, "That's not good. You you can't be doing that." That's not, that's not good, dude. Like I get, I got made fun of a lot, but now I'm up there, I'm up there in the late teens, sometimes getting to the twenties on a good day. And I'm, I'm roughly where I should be. Um, and it's still growing and getting stronger. And then, uh, you know, coming up with a basic dieting. I no longer drink soda or energy drinks. Really. Um, uh, I used to, I used to drink a 20 ounce Red Bull every day for like the past year and a half. Um, I mean, I coached gymnastics and then I, now I own a gym and I coach there seven days a week pretty much. I was like, okay, go to a gas station, 20 ounce Red Bull. Later in the afternoon, 20 ounce Red Bull. That's, that was not good for me. But now it's like I, coffee, water, and you know, sometimes I'll have a Gatorade. Right. So, um, and then you know, eating the right kinds of foods. Right, right. The dieting is key. That is the most, important, arguably the most important thing is not eating junk food especially fast food, no matter how tempting it is. Don't eat fast food, guys. And it, it can be very tempting at times. I love Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> yeah, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so just, just one final point uh, I wanted to ask. You can't pick yourself. Who do you think will become the next person to win a million dollars on American Ninja Warrior. You can only name one name. Who is it? Drew Dreschel all the way. I don't even have to think about it. All right. Well, there you go. 100% Drew Dreschel. I remember watching him. Uh, I, I watch him compete every year, every time. He is the most consistent, the strongest athlete. Um, you know, Isaac and Jeff, they did great things, and they're really strong. But Drew is, the only, is like the, one of the only athletes on American Ninja Warrior who's been consistently strong. Um, and that's the key. Is consistent. You can have one great year. 
that's really cool. Doesn't mean you're doesn't mean you're a strong ninja. You could have one great year, could be a fluke. Um, consistency is the key, and that's what Drew brings to the table every single time he touches the course. Perfect prime example here: the National Ninja League World Finals stage one. He his demo run made it look like a cakewalk. Um, we just had one percent of our competitors clear. That says it all. Yes, that's uh, it's, it's very interesting statistic, and uh, we'll have to see what happens. And who knows? Maybe maybe you'll be the next person to do it. I I like to think maybe it'll happen. <laughs> eventually, eventually. I'm not very good at rope climbs, but I'm getting there. And uh, like I said, it's just doing what you love and love what you do. Very well said. So thank you very uh, thank you very much for coming and doing the interview with me. It's much appreciated. And thank you everyone for watching this interview and make sure you subscribe and i'll see you next time for more coverage of national ninja league finals i'll see you next time this is ron burgundy signing off <laughs>